Representative, um, now we are we were uh, scheduled to give the Daishan Wong Award, which will be explained to you at 11 o'clock, and the recipients of the award are outside. So this is going to be like a five or seven minute uh, interlude, and then we will resume our session. Steve Igo will uh, will will explain to you what the award is about. This is it's a wonderful couple that has been really very generous of their time um, and resources uh, in uh, in supporting cardiac surgery. So um, uh, let's 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 wait for everyone to come in and uh, and uh, and have a seat, and then I'll uh, hand it over to Steve Igo. Uh, St Steve, what's your official title? Uh, director of the Entrepreneurial Institute. Yeah, so, so Steve is the director of the Entrepreneurial Institute um, uh, in our heart center. And he's, uh, he's a great go-to guy for developing stuff. He's actually helping me develop a cannula right now. Uh, but uh, uh, he's, a, he's a wonderful guy. And he will be explaining to you what the award is about and, uh, and who these wonderful, uh, this wonderful couple is that will be receiving it. Steve? Thank you. So can we, uh, can we see that first slide, please? So um, we're here today to um, honor Linda and Jack Gill and uh, with the uh, Daishan Wong Memorial Service Award. We have some folks here that are gonna tell us about it. Um, let's see which. So the Daishan Wong uh, Award was established in 2010. Um, it was first uh, presented at our Pumps and Pipes meeting um, in 2013. This year, we have formed a partnership uh, with the organization uh, sponsoring this award uh, with Pumps and Pipes. I want to just take a minute to talk a little bit about Pumps and Pipes. Uh, this is the 10th year, actually the 11th year, sorry, uh, for the organization. It is a cross-industry collaboration, essentially a professional society, um, uh, between energy, aerospace, and medicine. Um, Dr. Lumsden, who's here, Chairman of the Department of Cardiovascular Surgery, is the founder of Pumps and Pipes. I'm the Executive Director. Um, founding organizations were ExxonMobil, Houston Methodist, Heart and Vascular Center, University of Houston, and NASA. Um, we try to find ways uh, of, of um, collaborating together, or what Dr. Lumsden calls looking in the other guy's toolkit. Last year, uh, Pumps and Pipes 10, we uh, webcast our symposium live. We had over 5,000 people watch our webcast during that day. Um, 88 countries, all 50 states. It is a diverse audience. Uh, we have astronauts. Uh, heart surgeons, um, uh, students, uh, college students, high school students. We even go down to the middle school level. So it is a, um, um, a, a day of education, talking to one another, meeting new friends, and then hopefully this will lead to collaborations. So I'm going to introduce now uh, Jeff uh, Applegate, he's with the Gulf Coast Medical Device Manufacturers Association. He's going to tell you a little bit more about this award. My name is Jeff Applegate, um, and I am uh, CEO of uh, uh, Texas Injection Molding, and we're a contract uh, injection molding company. Um, this organization started uh, about uh, eight or nine years ago, uh, Mark Hendricks, who at that time was leading a contract uh, medical device manufacturer, ma manufacturing company here in town, uh, he and I were at a BioHouston event and we were looking around and, and uh, knowing that the, the Texas Medical Center was spending $2 billion a year in R&D and we were seeing uh, technology coming out but then being commercialized outside of the Houston area, we said, what can we do? to help keep that here. And when we started talking to folks, they said, well, we just can't get it done in Houston. There's just not the resources. And we're looking around, we knew all these resources. We were all in our different silos. So that was the idea of how we come up with Gulf Coast Medical Device Manufacturers, which was a community of folks that were trying to help commercialize medical devices in the Houston area. And so we started that and uh, grew that and have been doing it for a number of years and found that many of us did things beyond medical devices and we uh, then formed the uh, Greater Houston Manufacturers Association. Um, let's see how I, this is the, it's this 
uh, forward here. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Um, give you a little background of Daishan Wong. When we founded it, Daishan had a regulatory consulting uh, organization. And as we did education seminars, is how do you take your medical device and bring it to market? Daishan was there to help people all along the way. He, he, we would put medical device 101 seminars together and Daishan Wong would, would, would conduct and lead those. And he was a uh, really tireless uh, advocate for, for getting things done and, and helping people. Um, he was in his own community, the, the Chinese American community. Um, when they needed a playground built, he was there. When they needed something at the church done, he was there. And he, he was just an amazing person as far as his love for the community, his love for the, the, the professional community as well as the, the community that he operated in in the Chinese American community. Um, and he supported the medical device uh, area as well. Okay, sorry. What we looked at, what, Dai Shan Wong came down with uh, pancreatic cancer, died quickly. And it was a big loss for our organization and um, a big loss for us personally. We lost a dear friend. And we said, what can we do to try to recognize Dai Shan for his contribution and what can we do to, uh, to, to remember him? And so we established this award for that purpose. And we said, what are the characteristics of Dai Shan that we want to celebrate? And those are people that have a demonstrated leadership in entrepreneurial efforts to commercialize the medical device technology. Someone that shows a spirit of collaboration with a community of local entrepreneurs that works to get well together with others. Uh, generously de donates their time and energy to help other people succeed. Uh, display a genu genuine welfare or concern for the welfare of others. And J Daishan was, um, amazing both on a personal and professional level and then maintain high ethical and professional standards so that's what we were looking at what are the, the what are the candidates and this is a, a slate of the candidates that we've recognized and i would those those reese terry who's the founder of cyberonics is here he was the 2015 nomination so congratulations reese and uh we're glad that you could make it here and these are other folks that many of you may know that have uh, contributed to the houston community to the medical device community um, volunteered their times and, and met those standards so that's a, a little bit of background on the daishan wong award and uh, i want to uh, you know thank you for the opportunity to celebrate you guys so we're going to step through a little bit of um background on Linda and Jack Gill. And I should let Linda and Jack know that this conference today is uh, the Reevolution Conference Summit is on minimally invasive cardiac surgery. So we have cardiac surgeons in the audience from all over the country. Uh, they are proctors here as well as they, there are people in the audience that will be training uh, this afternoon. So uh, they're going to I think, understand what is going on as we step through this. So a little bit of background on Jack, native Texan, graduated from Lamar University, PhD from Indiana University, majored in organic uh, chemistry. Linda is a native uh, Kentuckian, graduated University of Kentucky. She has an honorary doctorate at University of Kentucky in 2001. Uh, Jack and Linda were married in 1969 in San Francisco. Their son, Jason, I believe, is here today. There he is in the back. He's attending. Um, so we're really happy that he's here with us today for this award for his parents. They are also proud grandparents as well. Linda talks about the grandchildren a lot. So how do we define Jack Gill? Um, Jack calls this his logo bio. And this is the easiest way to do this. It would take a long time to talk my way through this, so I'm gonna pause for five seconds, 10 seconds, and just let you look at this slide and see all the things that Jack Gill has been and is involved in. So let's focus in on a few things. The Gill Foundation of Texas is a philanthropic organization uh, that has sponsored a number of uh, 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 programs and um, uh, institutions as well, including the Gill Center 
uh, for Biomolecular Science at Indiana University. He established the Goose Society of Texas, which stands for the Grand or Order of Success Successful Entrepreneurs. Uh, he's also a member of the Horatio Alger Association. Um, Jack and, and Linda are involved in numerous scholarship programs um, uh, around the United States. They founded the, uh, the Gil Hart Institute at University of Kentucky. And I just want to make a couple of comments here about Linda. Um, Linda has 40 years of volunteering. And primarily, she's volunteered in medical institutions. And primarily, she's volunteered in areas of like the intensive care unit. Uh, she was at Stanford University Medical Center in Palo Alto, uh, where Jack uh, had a successful <laughs> venture capital firm. Uh, so she interfaced with Norman Shumway, uh, perhaps on an almost daily basis. Uh, she was also uh, at uh, Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. And we're really happy to say that she's been here with us at Houston Methodist uh, for the last 21 years. She's the family liaison in the cardiovascular intensive care unit. And I took this picture of Linda yesterday at her desk uh, with her notebook, uh, which she always has with her. And um, um, as she told me at lunch one day, uh, when she is in, in that uh, family waiting room, she owns that family waiting room that day that she's there. So I'm going to show a, few, a couple of slides here that all of you know this, but I think that for us, we wanted to reinforce it in what Linda does for us here at Houston Methodist. So let's talk about the world of the cardiovascular intensive care unit. As you know, it's composed of health care providers, doctors, nurses, technicians. Uh, of course, the patient is central in, in, in the intensive care unit. And then there's also the family. So all of these are interrelated, and Linda is right in the middle of all of that. And in fact, as you all know, uh, in an intensive care unit, the cardiovascular intensive care unit, there's a spectrum of human emotions on any given day. Um, perhaps there are as many as 100 family members in the intensive uh, care unit waiting room uh, during the day. Linda is the liaison that brings them back to the unit to see their family members when they come out of surgery. She interfaces with the physicians and, and puts them in contact with one another. She is very important. She is the glue that holds the intensive care unit family waiting room together. And for me, I'm just so pleased that Jack and Linda could be with us today uh, to uh, receive this award. It means a lot to us. And so I would like you to uh, join me in welcoming that this year's recipients of the Daishong Wong Award, Linda and Jack Gill. I'm going to pull the award over. So, Dr. Lumsden, come up and say a few words, perhaps. Thank you. I'll let you present that. Well, first of all, congratulations and thank you for your contribution, both at Mathis and in the Houston community at large. I mean, you saw that list of bullet points describing the qualities, and each one of those individuals could easily get this, but it's a true honor for us to be able to give it to you together. Um, I think I've known Jack a long time, and I didn't even know that Linda was married to, to Jack. <clears throat> And so we go out of the way this works in our waiting room. Now, you've all seen that huge tower that's being built that we're very proud of. We don't show you our ICUs and the operating rooms that we're in the waiting room in particular uh, that we're currently in because they've been running for 50 years. Fonda Brown operating room on my desk is the opening day operating room schedule from 1968. And so it's uh, Dr. DeBakey, Stanley Crawford, Cooley, all these guys basically were in there. And that's going to close next year as we kind of move over. And we're hoping we're going to keep that name going. But the ORs are fine. But the ICUs are kind of like you expect Florence Nightingale to kind of come out and make rounds for us. And it's even harder, I think, on the patient's families. Patients are asleep. They're sedated. But some of our families are in those waiting rooms for weeks, and it's not exactly the nicest place. You're going to love where, where, we are, where we are going to. Now, but the dirty secret is that I've been trying to get Mark Boom to build that tower for years, 
And I had to use your name. I told them, look, you know, Linda's just mad. You know, we need that new ICU waiting room bill. And that was really what tipped it. So, you know, a billion dollar tower later, thank you very much, Linda. It wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you. But again, there's also one owner, Michael. I'm sure Linda would be the first one. These are folks who are in that waiting room every day and often have to deal with some very difficult situations. Not always good news. And then we walk away as the surgeons at that point in time and we leave a bunch of other people behind to kind of help pick up the pieces you know, of the emotions that are flowing around there. So I can't think of anyone or any couple who are more deserving. And thank you very much indeed for your contribution to us. Thank you. And I'll come and give you a word.